हेलो वेलकम टू फिजियोथेरापी जुनून एंड टुडेज आई डॉक्टर विनीता एंड टुडेज वीडियो ऑन द फ्रैक्चर ऑफ रेडियल हैड ओके द रेडियल हैड फ्रैक्चर वाई इट्स ड्यू टू द आउट स्ट्रेच हैंड पेशेंट फॉल ड्यू टू विद आउट स्ट्रेच हैंड एंड द रेडियल हैड अफेक्टेड एंड fall on to outstretch hand it occur when you fall down and try to break the fall by reaching down with your hand this may result in an upper extremity injury such as sprain or a fracture and in this video we are talking about fracture and the rehabilitation part or more emphasis on the rehabilitation part okay because and the journal fracture and type of fracture you all knows and uh, are more emphasis on the rehabilitation part simple classifications of radial head fracture by the mason's classification first or type 1 which is non displayed fracture often missed on radiograph and positive posterior fat pad signs okay and the second one is the marginal radial head fracture with displacement in first you see that there is no displacement and it's very minimal or maybe not found in the uh, radiograph but second one is the marginal radial head fracture with displacement and depre depressions or angulations you see the difference between these two type 1 and type 2 always compare okay the third one is commun comminuted fracture of the entire radial head here you see comminuted fracture of the entire radial head and the fourth one is the concomitant dislocation of the elbow or other associated injuries here we see that our according to our mentions classification our treatment also differ stage by stage okay according to type 1 our treatment is minimal immobilization and early motions and in second the marginal radial head fracture a type 2 fracture what we see that one is the open reduction and internal fixation and we start the early motions according to the type 3 what are treatment goal open reduction and internal fixation with the early motion if possible because here is injury is large fracture is large and it is small and it's very small and in the fourth one the radial head resection and check distal wrist joints okay and uh, guarded prognosis for return to sport so here you see that our treatment is differ with the type of fracture due to complex anatomy and bio biomechanics of the elbow joint the radial head fractures are changing cha very challenging sorry and particularly the commutative ones the third one is very challenging to treat okay the aim of radial head fracture treatment is to restore the anatomy and joint kinematics and achieve a stable pain free range of motion and to avoid post traumatic degenerative changes what are principle of rehabilitation the non displaced type 1 fracture require little or no immobilization the active and passive range of motion can begin immediately after injury to promote full range of motion conditioning in the form of elbow flexion extension supination all all the movements okay and wrist and shoulder isotonic can be implemented immediately usually with the first week after injury stress to the radial head is minimized 
थ्री टू सिक्स वीक ऑफ एक्टिव एल्बो फ्लैक्शन एक्सटेंशन कैन बी यूज अलोंग विद द रिस्ट आइसोटोनिक एक्सरसाइजेस एंड इन टाइप टू एंड टाइप थर्ड फ्रैक्चर्स यूजली रिक्वायर द ओपन रिडक्शन एंड इंटरनल फिक्सेशन फ्रिक्वेंटली इमोबलाइजेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर अ ब्रीफ टाइम फॉलो बाय एक्टिव एंड पैसिव रेंज ऑफ एक्सरसाइजेस in the type 4th comminuted fractures frequently requires stabilization of the elbow joint and excision of the fragments and usually cause some functional limitations the full range of motion rarely returns in type 4th injury and chronic elbow pain often persist so you have to emphasize on this point that in type 4 the range full range of motion and the elbow pain persist okay full range of motion you can't achieve very early okay then we proceed to the next slide the most common symptoms of radial head fractures includes like pain and uh, on the outside of the elbow swelling in the elbow joint difficulty in bending and stra uh, straightening the elbow accompanied by pain inability or difficulty in turning the forearm palm to palm down and vice versa and this is the uh, this is classification or this is this these symptoms are um classified by the american academy of orthopedic surgeons 2014 according uh, to our uh, some articles or with the help of some books here is some phase wise treatment or week to week treatment because if if uh, uh, patient from sports or uh, with the with the si simple or normal clients you have to proceed phase wise and uh, what is the benefit of phase wise uh, phase wise treatment here you see that if patient coming in conditions with the phase 2 uh, with uh, in your clinic then you have to proceed with the phase 2 treatment okay not with the phase 1 treatment and all you just assess the part and if you are patient in phase 2 you start with the phase 2 okay it's it help to the patient it help to you also phase 1 0 to 2 weeks radial head and the the open reduction and internal fixation uh, the immobilization in splint for 1 to 2 weeks radial head replacement without associated ligamentous injuries may start range of motion if tolerable the first post operative day okay a sling for comfort may be used in early post operative period elbow active and active assisted range of motion for flexion and extension stress in the coronal plane varus or valgus should be avoided by performing range of motion with arm close to the body or uh, phase 1 is the immediate motion phase okay what what are our goal our goal is to decrease pain inflammation regain full wrist elbow range of motion retard muscular atrophy okay in in first phase the active assisted range of motion like 15 to 105 degrees okay and by 2 weeks begin like uh, gripping exercises or putty exercises begin isometric strengthening exercises isotonic strengthening exercises in phase 1 or week 1 okay but avoid flexion in pronation extension splint may be used with subsequent increase in extension parameters per surgeon discretion in radial head replacement maintain motion of the adjacent joints phase 2 in phase 2 it is it is the intermediate phase what are goal maintain full elbow range of motion progress elbow strengthening exercise gradually increase functional demands 
ओके और इन बिटवीन द थर्ड वीक यू स्टार्ट द लाइक सूचर और स्टेपल्स रिमूव एट टू वीक कंटिन्यू फेज वन एक्सरसाइज एक्टिव एंड एक्टिव एसिस्टेड लाइक सुपिनेशन प्रोनेशन आर इनिशिएटेड इन फेज थ्री और वीक थ्री सॉरी इनिशिएटेड शोल्डर स्ट्रेंथनिंग एक्सरसाइज कंसनट्रेट ऑन द रोटेटर कफ कंटिन्यू रेंज ऑफ मोशन एक्सरसाइजेज फॉर एल्बो फुल फ्लैक्स फ्लैक्सन और एक्सटेंशन एक्सरसाइजेज इनिशिएट लाइट रेजिस्टेंस एल्बो फ्लैक्सन एक्सटेंशन ओके विद द वन पाउंड ऑफ वेट एंड इनिशिएट एक्टिव असिस्टिव रेंज ऑफ मोशन पैसिव रेंज ऑफ मोशन सुपिनेशन प्रोनेशन टू टोल रेंस एट द वीक सिक्स बाय द by the starting continue active assistive range of motion and passive range of motion supination pronation to full range progress shoulder program progress elbow strengthening exercise but after by the end of the 6 week full range of motion of elbow in flexion extension should be obtained maintain motion of adjacent joints check with the surgeon regarding bony healing in the or if and group but should should generally be achieved by 6 weeks weight restrictions limitations decrease by surgeon discretions in phase 3 6 week and beyond this is the advanced strengthening phase what are goals our goal to maintain the full range of motion increase the strength increase the strength power endurance gradual initiate the sporting activities okay in week 7 continue the active assistive range of motion passive range of range of motion to full supination and pronation initiate eccentric elbow flexion extension initiate plyometric exercises program continue isotonic program for forearm wrist and shoulder this continuity maintain till the 12 week by the 8 week full preoperative motion should be obtained including supination and pronation and these activity till the 12 week this all about the rehabilitation part of the shoulder i hope this lecture is helpful for you all and uh, very very good uh, learning uh, from my videos and uh, thank you so much please like share and subscribe my videos and